Did we? Did we set those goals? Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marissa, this is Self Care Risk, and I am a licensed professional counselor who loves all things self care, and I love to create videos to show my lifestyle and knowledge around mental health. Today, we are gonna be checking in on those new year goals that we set, did we? Did we set those goals? If you did, I know New Year's goals and New Year resolutions aren't for everyone, but whether you have a New Year's resolution or not, this video should be really helpful for any behavior that you wanna change. We're gonna talk about stages of change, which is in therapy, a model that we use to talk about transitioning from goal to goal or just whatever you wanna change in your life. Now, I have mixed feelings about New Year resolutions, so we'll get into that too, but I for sure wanna give you guys kind of like the behavior breakdown on stages that people go through typically when they are trying to make a change in their life and sometimes why it's so hard if you don't know exactly where you are in that stage of change. So if you're interested in checking in on those New Year's resolutions or you just want to see how to better change your behavior, stay tuned. to topics around addiction and substance use disorders and that topic area is when I learned about the stages of change so I'll be referring back to that so if at any moment you feel triggered or you think that you will be throughout the video please exit now please indulge in some type of self-care reach out to your mental health professional or just talk to someone you trust as always my full disclaimer is in my very first video and it's always linked down in the description okay well let's start with talking about these new year resolutions that we all create right this is a big thing i feel like is it just american culture society i don't know but i know that we commonly talk about new year's resolutions when that time comes around january 1st every year we have these big plans to start out with something new that we want to change that we think is going to be the most beneficial i said earlier i have mixed feelings about it i really do here's are kind of my pros and cons about new year's resolutions let's start with the pros one pro that i have about new year's resolutions is that you're starting new goals you have a plan, you are starting to develop ideas about what you wanna change this upcoming new year. That is always a win in my book. Growing, developing, whatever you wanna do, that's always a win. Another pro that I see from New Year's resolutions is, is it gives a sense of a restart. Once that clock hits January 1st, 12.01 a.m., it's time to say, okay, we did that, we're done with it, we put an end point on it and we have a new start. One other pro that I see from it is that because it is a new start, I mean, we always have a new year, right? So at least some point in a year, you are making a change for yourself. That's kind of like a checkpoint that we always have to say, okay, at this point in time, I wanna see some growth within me. Those are a couple of pros I see from New Year's resolutions. But let's talk about the cons now. One con that I see when people make New Year resolutions that it lasts for like two seconds. And of course, if that's your plan, if like you're like for this new year, I wanna change whatever this is for one week. Okay, so be it, that's what it is. But if you are a person who's like, I wanna change something about my whole lifestyle, and you're like, it's gonna start in January. And it's so big that you can't even comprehend how to start that and manage it and change that. It's just gonna be like, a, you go very hard at it and it just drops off eventually because it's not something you were actually ready for. And we'll get into that when it comes to stages of change. So that's one con. Another con is kind of like in the same breath as the pro about starting on a new year in that Yes, well, it's good that you are doing something at this set point, but it's like, why wait until this one set point in time that we created of the, like a new year and not do it at any point? Because while it does give that sense of a restart, new, it's fresh, it's, it's fresh, flirty, and 30, a lot of times we push it off to the new years just to say, okay, let's do it. But what's the difference between January 1st, like quite literally looking at a, at a date perspective, What's the difference between January 1st and December 1st? And it's starting to be, okay, I don't wanna actually do this goal, I just keep pushing it back because it makes more sense to do it on the New Year's. Hope that makes sense. One third con that I see from this is that all or nothing kind of mindset. And if you watch my video, I think it was my Saturday Reset video, I'll put a, 
tag up here. I don't know what side it goes on. I talked about in that video about a YouTuber here, her name Abby Sharp, who is a nutritionist, and she talks about kind of like this last supper mindset. And I really related that when I was talking in my Saturday Reset video to anxiety and how that relates to the all or nothing mindset. And she was talking about like, you know, like I'm gonna get everything I'm gonna get it all out, you know, I'm gonna eat all the food I, I'm not supposed to eat, I'm gonna do it all. And then on this day, I'm officially gonna be like, I'm gonna go to the other extreme. I'm gonna not do those things, I'm gonna cut it out, I'm not gonna eat that food, and that's gonna be my goal. Which, okay, if you are that type of person and that works for you, so be it. But that could be an unhealthy behavior because that's a big jump going from one extreme to another extreme, kind of missing all that gray area. And then when you can't get that extreme, you're gonna feel like a failure because you're just gonna go back to the extreme that you were already doing. But that's kind of my third con about that is if you set out on January 1st to be like, okay, when January 1st, 1201 hits, I'm gonna be this new person, has all these new behaviors. But in all of December, you were like purging, getting all that out, doing all the stuff that you were still doing that you thought was negative. So to me, being a new year resolution person isn't a good or bad thing. It's pretty neutral. Um, I just say that if you are a person who does new year's resolutions, ask yourself like, how does it feel to set a new year's resolution? Is that a positive thing or is it a negative thing? Are you putting too many expectations on yourself or does it feel really refreshed and a good start to the year? Just kind of exploring like what that really means to you. Why I wanted to create this video now is, you know, we're two months into the new year. I want to be able to check in with you guys if you made those new year's resolution goals. What were they? I'm excited to know. Leave me a comment down below letting me know what those goals are and if you're still doing them. Okay, well, let's get into like the psychology, the therapy, the, the models, the behaviors behind change. We are going to be talking about the stages of change. I already mentioned that a little bit earlier. If you don't know exactly what the stages of change is, I'm gonna give a quick rundown of what that is and then we'll get into talking about how we can apply this to our goal setting not just for New Year's resolutions, but for any goal that we have. Let's discuss the stages of change and I'll kind of walk us through an example to give us a better understanding of what that actually looks like applied to a person. So the stages of change is also known as a trans theoretical model and it consists of six progressive stages that happen over time. However, although I do say it's progressive, you could also move forward and backwards in them. And you'll see what I mean about that later. So in the literature, there are a couple different terms that we use for each stage, but it's typically these ones. And like I mentioned in my trigger warning, I remember learning about the stages of change when I was in my addictions class. Why it's so important to know the stages of change um, for people with addiction is to understand how the, as a therapist, how to meet them to where they are and not just expect them to be where we're at. And just to throw in there, I'm not specialized in substance use disorders, nor have I worked in the center around them, but this is just what I remember learning from my program. So let's get into these stages. Okay, number one, we have pre-contemplation. People in this stage are not necessarily aware that there is even a problem to exist. So if they don't know a problem is there, they don't have any intention on changing that behavior. People who typically are in this stage are, they learn from other people telling them that there is something to change. Now, if you watch my reasons to go to therapy, I talked about if, if people are often telling you to go to therapy, you're probably in this stage, especially if you don't actually see what they're talking about. So common times like people are in denial, they're like, no, like, what are you talking about? I don't have this issue. Let's look at this from an example standpoint. So say Sally has a hard time saving her money, right? She's just a person who spends, spends, spends. She is nearly about to go into negative. That's her bad habit here. Okay, that's our example. Sally would be in the pre-contemplation stage if she was just still spending, 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 blowing all this money, and she still feels like it's good. She doesn't see an issue with it, but maybe her mom comes to her and is like, Sally, <laughs> you're about to have no money. Shouldn't we change this? Should we create a savings plan? Should we do something like that? And Sally's probably like, no mom, like I don't know what you're talking about. She's in denial. She's like telling her mom, oh, I don't really see this as a problem. Let's go to the next one, the contemplation stage. Now this person knows that there's a problem. They finally are acknowledging that there's a problem that exists. However, 
they are still not really there with actually changing it or even seeing what it would look like to change. Maybe they're starting to have some thoughts, but they're still really on the back burner of actually changing it. This is kind of like ambivalent stage where it's like, okay, I could see it. I really could, but also like, mm, not really. So if you're still in this stage, you're still not really seriously considering changing it. You just finally realize that there is an issue going on. So you continue whatever that behavior is. So back to our example with Sally, as she started to think, man, I really have been spending a lot. My money is kind of going down the drain. This, this is not going to work for me, but she's still like, but those shoes, <laughs> those shoes are looking kind of good. I'm going to still spend them. She's starting to realize like, okay, I do start seeing a problem. It's really getting to her, but she's still doing the behaviors of spending, 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 spending money she's supposed to be spending. Let's move into the third stage. Now we're going to the preparation stage. In this preparation stage, it's exactly what it sounds like. It can also be called the determination stage. So if you're in a stage, you now recognize there's a problem and you start to have the desire to change it. And now you're trying to create those steps to change that behavior. Like it's your full intent. Like, okay, I do want to change this behavior, but maybe you just don't know how yet, or maybe there's still barriers in place for you not to actually change it. In this stage, people are starting to take those baby steps to get what they want to change. So going back to our example with Sally, so she realizes that she's spending too much and it's really taking a hit on her finances. She's like, okay, I really do want to stop this behavior. I don't want to spend this much anymore. It's not good for me. And thirdly, she's now saying like, okay, let me sit down and create some, some plans for how I can decrease my spending. She like creates like an Excel sheet of all her expenses over the last month. In this stage, she could identify what her debts are. That's what the preparation stage looks like. It's those small minor steps and we do know that we want to change. We're set on changing now. Next stage is the action stage. This is what we're really trying to get into. Like I said, exactly how it sounds. Action stage is when people are changing that behavior. They are in the process of making the change and you can actually see it. Like someone would look at that person and be like, wow, they are changing or making efforts to change. Or not only are they doing the change, with that you start to see how everything around them shifts too. So going back to Sally, she's now actively saving that money that she would have been spending before, whatever the case may be. And so now that she's saving more, maybe she's now putting that energy into something else. Her finances and financial struggles were affecting her relationship with her friends because they're like, girl, we can't take you out of nowhere. You have no money. And we know that you're, not, you're trying to spend money that you don't have. Now, since she probably does have more money or she's trying to manage it a little bit better, her friends may be a little bit more open to that. You thought the action stage was really important, but to me, the most important stage, most hardest stage is the maintenance stage. And that's what comes after action. So in this stage, the action has happened, you're active in it, and it's not just a starting point, but now for at least six months, you have been actively changing your behavior. And going back to those New Year's resolution goals, if you started your New Year's resolution on January 1st, and all those months until six months later, you are in action. You have not completely solidified that until you've gotten to the maintenance stage. And this stage, you're continuing doing the behavior that you want to change. You're working to not relapse and you're intending to make this change stick. You still may face challenges to whatever that change was, but you kind of already like solidified it to you know how to get through those challenges. The last stage, which I've seen some literature, I first originally learned about it. I did not know about this stage. Well, I'm kind of learning about this too. So the last stage, technically, there's also another stage that I want to talk about too. But this last stage is called termination. This stage, people no longer need to take action to relapse whatever change they wanted to make. They completed the change process. They have come to a point where it's like, this is sticking, there's no question about it, and I can move on to the next thing if I wanted to. They're so sure that this is what they want and this is what they want to stick. Now, the termination stage is a rare stage that people get to. So don't be disappointed if you ever get to that point and you're like, I've been in the maintenance stage for so long, but I'm still kind of having these challenges. I'm still thinking about changing this again. There's nothing wrong with that. Actually, any of these stages of change, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just what you're at and that's fine. So a lot of people do stay in that maintenance stage because we often like go back again. 
we want to see if we want to change something else um, we're not really satisfied for whatever that change was so it is a rare to get to this termination stage the other stage which i don't know if it's technically included in these stages it may just be something that we have to keep in mind but this relapse stage i know relapse can sound intense because when we think of relapse we think of like addiction like i mentioned earlier but relapse, just how it sounds, means that whatever change in behavior you are trying to make, something happen or you change something to where you go back in those stages of change. So, oh, I forgot to give my um, salad example. Let me catch up a little bit. So we um, got to Sally's action stages, right? Maintenance is six months later, she's still actively saving money. She's getting to her goal, her goals of like what she wants to save. That's her maintenance. Um, and she stays there for however long. Her termination would look like, say if Sally had this goal to get out of debt, like say like she started in 2022 and she wanted to have a zero debt by 2023 and she met that, I would consider that her termination stage. She met that goal, she stuck to it and she had no desire of changing that. And she got to it, she accomplished it. Now she could probably create another goal around that if she even wanted to. Now let's go to relapse where we are now. If Sally were to relapse, so say in that period of time where Sally was in that maintenance stage and she was actively saving it stuck for at least six months to something were to come up where she was triggered or something. And let's go back to the shoe example. She was like, mm, I really want those shoes. And these shoes are not just like $10 and they're not going to significantly impact her finances. They're like, they could set her back like a lot and set her back from that goal to being debt free by 2023. So a relapse with Sally getting those shoes, not only does the shoes take her out, but now she's kind of on this roll of like, well, now I spent the shoes. Let me spend this and let me spend this. And let me spend this. Like Sally is relapsing to those old negative behaviors. The key part is, is that everyone is at risk for relapse. It's not guaranteed. Not everyone does reach it, but it is a risk that we have to consider when we are trying to change something. I think I said this earlier, this can happen at any time. You can be in a contemplation stage and know, okay, there's a problem. I have the desire. I mean, I know how to get to that yet, but those are the two things I do know. You can stop in the middle of your contemplation stage to be like, nah, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. And you go back maybe to the pre-contemplation stage and you decide that's not even something that's worth changing. You're in denial again. So like I said earlier, there's no good stage of being or a bad stage of being. It's just what you're at. And the key to it is to meet yourself where you're at, to recognize I'm in the contemplation stage, so I need to do behaviors, get stable in that stage before I can move to the preparation stage. So going back to Sally's example, and this is really harmful, I think, with social media too. Say Sally, you know, we know her goals. Let's say she's in a pre-contemplation stage. She knows she wants to start saving more money and she knows that it's really harming her if she doesn't save, right? But she follows people on social media that are in the action stage of saving their money and they have so much in their savings and they're investing they're doing whatever with it and she's like i want to do that too i want to be where they're at so my new year's resolution is to save a thousand dollars within the first month of 2022. now i know we don't know sally's finances but how I described earlier, if she's significantly in debt and she also has behaviors that allow her to still want to spend excessively, I bet saving a thousand dollars isn't gonna be really realistic for her. Now, what would be better for Sally if she were to go, I see those people, that's where they're at and that's okay for them. Whatever they got to that point in their life, it probably makes more sense. But for me, what I need to do is go to the preparation stage and is identifying how I'm going to make those small minor changes. And then from that point on, Sally can really get a good idea of what the steps look like for her. What does this timeline look like for her rather than just expecting herself to be on someone else's expectations and in their stage of change. So guys, that is kind of my breakdown of the stages of change and how they relate to us making our New Year's resolution goals. So I really hope that this was informational and helpful for when you do either create a new year's resolution goals or you just want to really examine the goals that you have and if you're on the right track with them like i said before let me know down in the comments what your guys's new year's resolution goals are and if you're on track with them or if you need to change something remember there's nothing wrong with changing them you're just getting a more realistic expectation for yourself or if you weren't a person that created those new year's resolution goals 
let me know what things that you do want to change and maybe some barriers or let me know which stage of change you're in when it comes to those goals. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. All the references from the sources I talked about today will be linked in my description box. And if you guys haven't checked it out before, I typically put the um, reference in my videos. It's also referenced in my description box and that's where I get all my information and resources from. But you guys, I will see you in my next video this Sunday. I'm doing another day in life as a therapist video. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!